Welcome to Tefo History Channel. I am Catherine Margaret Kruger and I will tell you the story behind the Yi story. Or shall we say today, her story. For we are talking and telling you all about Mujaji, the Rain Queen of the Lebedo people. Hmm. So get yourself a cup of coffee, sit back and let's start his story around. Now before we get to the story of Mujaji, the Rain Queen, I firstly want to tell you about her people, her tribe, the Balubedu people or the Lubedu people. This tribe actually, as you say, around about 400 years ago, they lived in the Manumatopa area in southeastern Zimbabwe. They were ruled by kings at that stage. Hmm. And they spoke a language, even today, that is very closely related to Northern Sutu. When they arrived here in South Africa, they settled down uh, in sort of in the middle of South Africa, close to the town of Tsanin today. And they still live there today. Now, what makes this tribe very unique in South Africa is that they are the only queendom in South Africa and ruled by the, well, majestic uh, queen, Mujaji the Rain. She could gather clouds and with her powers she can make it rain and a drought disappear. Now the big question is how and why did the Libero people get to be ruled by a queen and how did Queen Mujaji got her rain making skills or powers? Well, there's two stories that I know of and you can make up your own mind which one is true. Now the first story is all about chief or King Mukhodu. He lived all the way up in southeastern Zimbabwe in Manumatopa. He was already an old man and one day he went into a trance and his ancestral spirits talked to him and they told him Mukhodu, if you know what we know you would be very wary. Your own sons are plotting against you and they want to take over your kingdom. Mukhodu, if you want to save your kingdom, you would kill all your sons. And listen to this. This is quite weird, but this is how the story goes. Mukhodu, you have to marry your own daughter, Zugundini. You have to impregnate her. The first child that would be born, Mukhodu, would be a gold child and she will have the power to make rain and you will become a very very rich chief because all your crops would be fantastic so that's exactly what Mukhodu did he killed all his sons and he married his daughter and he predated her the first child that was born was unfortunately not a girl it was a boy and Mukhodu was furious and he ordered them to strangle this boy child. The second child that was born was luckily a girl child. They named her Mujaji and she had the power to make Now the second story that I want to tell you is also about Mukhodu, the chief of the Balubedu people. So his daughter Duzungini was impregnated by her own half-brother. They wanted to kill Duzungini. Why not also kill her half-brother? Heaven knows. It takes two to tango, doesn't it? Anyhow, so Duzungini went to her mother and she told her, Mom, what must I do? Her mother told her, Duzungini, here is the rain-making skills and the rain-making powers. You just flee, girl. Flee with some followers all the way south. And that's exactly what Duzungini did. She went down south and she only stopped until she got to a valley called the Molototsi Valley. That is in Limpopo province in South Africa. There she settled down among the cycad trees. Now, if you see how these cycads actually grow, you must know they get enough rain. Because even up to today, you can see this luscious forest full of cycads. So that is then the area 
where the Lobedo people stayed and up to today that's where they are and their queen was actually their name Mojanji, the ruler of the day. So the Balobero people was actually a small tribe and they were not really a military force. So by ruling with this mystique, Mujaji made sure that nobody attacked the Balobero people. The other chiefs were so afraid of Mujaji uh, that they had sent her gifts just to make sure that she is your friend and that you are on the right side of Mujaji. You see, if you were the friend of Mujaji, she would make sure that it would rain over your area where you were living and you will have a great crop. But if you were her enemy, a drought was coming your way. Even King Shaka of the Great Zulu Kingdom had sent Mujaji gifts to make sure she was his friend. It was always thought that Mujaji was immortal, but as we know today, that was not the case. Now, why did the people think that she was immortal? It was because Mujaji had to stay in isolation to protect her rainmaking skills. She never spoke in public. She only spoke to her people through her royal council. Now, Mujaji may never marry, nor does she know who were the fathers of her children. For well, you see, she doesn't choose her own partners. No, 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 no. The partners are chosen for her by her royal council. Now, remember I told you that everybody thought that she was immortal? For she always stayed very young. Now, one of the reasons were that when the old Bujaji felt, oh my goodness, I am tired of ruling and making rain and nearly busy dying she would take her oldest daughter, train her the rainmaking skills and, and power and magic. And then she would cut out a piece of her skin for some of the magic and the power of rainmaking lies in the piece of skin of the old Mujaji. She would cut it out and work it into the skin of the new Mujaji. Then she would drink poison and commit suicide. Luckily today, the Mujajis do not have to drink poison anymore. Luckily. So whenever they give the rain over, the new Mujaji would just start ruling and the old Mujaji would just retire. Now from the 1800s, there was already six Mujajis that ruled the Balubedu people. At this stage, we are waiting now for the new Mujaji to be crowned as the Rain Queen when she turns 18. I want to tell you about Mujaji Makope now. She ruled the Balubedu people from 1981 until 2001. Our late president of South Africa, President Nelson Mandela, wanted to visit her and actually speak to her eye to eye. But as we know, you could only speak to Mujaji through her royal council. So, President Nelson Mandela actually thought by himself, ha ha, let me send her a present like the olden days. And that's what he did. He had sent the old Mujaji a Japanese vehicle. So I don't think the old Mujaji drove her own Japanese vehicle up and down the hills um, at her homestead. But she was probably driven up and down because she was an old lady. You see, then only President Nelson Mandela could speak eye to eye with her. He met up with her and he asked her, please tell me, Mujaji Makope, how do you make rain? And she didn't answer him. And then President Nelson Mandela said, <laughs> just like Queen Elizabeth, Queen Mujaji do not have to answer any questions. So, Mujaji Makope had three children and her daughter was to become the new Mujaji. Her name was Makaela. And Makaela unfortunately never became Mujaji the Sixth, for she passed away two days before her mother did. And then Mujaji Makope's granddaughter, Makobo, became the new Mujaji or Mujaji the Sixth.
only two years after her grandmother's death, Mukabu Constance Mujaji VI was crowned to become the new Mujaji of the Balubedu people. Now, she was only 25 years old, the youngest queen ever to rule the Balubedu people, the youngest queen ever to become a, a Mujaji. And also, she had the shortest reign. Apparently, she was very modern in the eyes of the royal council. And that's probably why there was such a delay before she was crowned as the Mujaji. The day when she was crowned as the Mujaji over the Lebedo people, a fine drizzle fell over the valley. And it was seen as a good omen. <laughs> or was it? You see, on the 10th of June 2010, Mujaji VI was admitted to hospital. She was only 27 years old. Two days after she was admitted, she passed away. Now, there's a lot of controversy surrounding her death. Some of the villagers said, well, she died of a broken heart because her lover was banned from the royal village by the royal council. His name was David Mukhale. And David Mukhale even said to himself, he thought that probably the royal council uh, poisoned Mujaji. That was the easiest way to get rid of her. You see, they thought that the ancestors didn't like Mujaji the Six because she was too modern. And she went to school. She wore denims. She wore t-shirts and she loved to party and go out to a disco and, and dance, dance the night away. So you can see she was, she was a normal, young, modern lady. But you know, the Majaji may not do that. She must stay in isolation. She's not supposed to have a boyfriend. So whatever is the story surrounding her death, we will never know. But on the day that they laid her coffin out, a fire broke out in front of her, her coffin. It was probably awesome, heaven knows. But luckily, they had put out the fire before the coffin could uh, uh, be set alight. She is survived by a son, Lukukela, and the daughter, Masala Nabo. Now, Masala Nabo would become Mujaji the Seventh. When she turns 18 in 2023, or will she? <laughs> you see, in 2020, the Royal Council announced that her brother, Lukukela, would become the new king of the Balubedu people. Ain't the, the Balubedu people ruled by a rain queen? No, I also thought so. Heaven knows uh, what is going on. And... Uh, you know, one of the reasons of why they said Masala Nabu would not become the queen of the, uh, the Balubedu people was because when she was only five months old after her mum's death, she was taken away to be raised somewhere else. And she was not taught the rainmaking skills. Also, they knew who her father was. And remember, there was a big taboo. You may not know who was the fathers of the, the children of the, the Mujaji. <laughs> we are still waiting for the announcement of the Royal Council of the Balubedu people. It is now 2021. I will keep you posted. History lovers, this was then the story behind the history, or shall we say, her story of Mujaji the Rain Queen of the Balubedu people. Now hit subscribe, like, and, and share. Yeah, and join me for my next video, Historying Around.